Yo, 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 physics, 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 physics. Hi, I'm Vinay Upan and I'm back. This is season 2, episode number 8 from the prediction series. And in this episode, I'm bringing to you a beautiful question, which is really going to test whether you have truly understood the concept of EMF or not. Electromagnetic induction is a very important chapter for JE Advanced. So it is crucial that you understand the concept of EMF. So let's take a look at this question. Consider a long metal cylindrical shell of length L, radius R and thickness T. Here D much more less than R, much more less than L. Now it's rotated about its axis with a constant angular acceleration uh, alpha. So let me just first draw the diagram. So I have a long cylindrical shell of radius r, length l. And the thickness is small given by d. And then it's rotated about its axis with a constant angular acceleration of alpha. Compute the current developed in it as a function of time and initially current was zero, the resistivity of the shell is zero, mass of the ma uh, electron is m and charge is minus e. So as this cylindrical shell is rotated, I need to figure out the current developed as a function of time. So before we analyze this question, a couple of things that we should uh, think about is will the current generated in the cylinder be the same in the ground frame as well as in the cylinder frame will that current be the same so we need to think about that and the next thing we need to think is why will the current be developed in the first place at all so if you want you can pause this video right now give it a try and then you can take a look at my solution all right so let's take a look at the solution so first thing let's address the question of whether the current is going to be the same in the ground frame as well as in the conductor frame so suppose i look at the top view So the cylinder, the metal cylinder is made up of positive ions as well as free electrons. So suppose I have a positive ion here and let's say this uh, positive ion is moving with some velocity V plus and uh, I also have an electron and let's say that's moving with a velocity V minus at some instant. So can I write my current density? So we know the current density is N E V vector. So for the positive charge, I can write it as n e v plus and for the negative charge i will write it as the charge of the electron is minus e and therefore this will be n e v plus minus v minus and therefore this will be so this is the relative velocity between the positive ions and the electrons so basically this just tells us that the current here i have written the current density is going to be independent of the frame of reference because uh, it's always going to turn out to be V relative. So the preferable choice of frame of reference, the uh, mathematically most convenient is going to be the conductor frame. So I'm going to go in the frame of the conductor, the frame of the cylinder, and I'm going to calculate uh, the current as a function of time. So let's take a look. So in the frame of the cylinder, remember the cylinder is, uh, has a uh, constant angular acceleration. So it's a non-inertial frame. So what are the forces going to be acting on the electron? So in the frame of the cylinder, there's going to be a pseudo force acting on the electron. Remember, I, I mentioned that we need to address another question that why will the current be generated in the first place? So why will there be a relative uh, velocity difference between the uh, positive ions and the electrons? You can imagine that in the frame of the cylinder, the positive ions are going to remain at rest and only the electrons are going to be moving because they're going to experience a pseudo force because of the acceleration of the cylinder. So that is the reason for the existence of the current and it's very easy to see from the frame of the cylinder. So if I look at the electron, what will be the force on it? The pseudo force. So if uh, the angular acceleration is in this way, this is the top view that I'm uh, looking at. The pseudo force will be in the opposite sense. And the magnitude of that would be mass of electron times the acceleration of the cylinder, which would be radius into ac angular acceleration, so mr alpha. This will be the pseudo force that will be accelerating the electron. Now let's come to the concept of EMF, very crucial, so pay attention. A uh, lot of uh, students have this misconception that EMF is simply integral e dot dl. EMF in a closed loop is simply integral e dot dl where e is the electric field. 
Now, this is not entirely correct. In fact, this is a special case where only electric field is present. The EMF in a loop is given by integral f dot dl, where f is the force acting per unit charge. If only electric field uh, or uh, electric force were acting on the charge or on the electron, the force would be electronic charge multiplied by the electric field and the force per unit charge would simply be the electric field itself, which is what we get here. But that's just a special case. See, the electron motion is driven by the force acting on it. The electron does not care whether that force is from the electric field or whether that force is from the magnetic field or whether that force is from some other source. In this case, the force is from the pseudo force. And therefore, the EMF that is generated in this loop is due to the net force acting on the electron. Now, now if the current were changing as a function of time, then uh, the magnetic field will also change as a function of time, which will lead to a non-conservative electric field, which can produce a uh, uh, EMF in the closed loop. So that EMF produced by the non-conservative electric field due to the motion of the current itself, that is nothing but the self EMF corresponding to the inductance. So you, your fundamentals have to be very, very clear in order to understand this. The electric field generated by the changing current itself will produce the self EMF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to only write the external EMF generated by the pseudo force. And I can take into account the self EMF directly when I include the inductance. So first of all, the external EMF due to the pseudo force is going to be uh, the force per unit charge is nothing but m r alpha divided by E multiplied by the uh, length. So because this pseudo force is a constant, alpha is a constant, I can just uh, write integral f dot dl as the force per unit charge multiplied by the length of the loop, which is 2 pi r. So 2 pi m alpha r squared divided by e. So this is, a ex this is like the external EMF generated inside the cylinder. And now the hard part is done. Now the question is very straightforward because I can model the cylinder as a circuit in which I have this as my external EMF. So I have an external EMF. It's a constant. Then we have some resistance for the cylinder and some inductance for the cylinder. So this is the corresponding circuit diagram. So now this is a standard circuit. Can I get the current? Can I write down the current as a function of time? Uh, I mean, I can write the current. Can you get the current? You should be able to write it. This is just a basic expression that everyone should know. Where uh, tau would be R by L. Tau is the time constant. So this is just a standard RL circuit that you would have studied in your uh, the electromagnetic induction chapter. So all we need to do now is get the resistance and the inductance. So I'm going to do that on the next page. And even the calculation of resistance and inductance is something that is uh, very basic and you should have studied that in your electromagnetic induction. I'm anyway going to do it on the next page. So let's take a look. So firstly, let's calculate resistance. So I have this cylinder, cylindrical shell in which my current is flowing. So my resistance is going to be rho into the length traveled by the current, which is 2 pi r divided by the area. So this area, this cross sectional area should be L into D. So this is my resistance. And what about my inductance? Now for inductance, if you notice that this long cylinder is basically behaving like a solenoid. Now this current has a continuous distribution. There are no separate wires in which current is flowing. The total current is I and it is continuously distributed on the surface of the cylinder. So it's like a one turn solenoid. Now for a solenoid, if I look at a solenoid, where you have uh, a number of turns, the inductance comes out to be mu naught n square L A, where A is the cross sectional area. This length is L. And what is small n? Small n is the number of turns per unit length. So this expression is of course a very basic expression that again I'm assuming you would have studied in your electromagnetic induction chapter. Okay, so if I uh, were to compare this cylinder with the solenoid, the cylinder is just a one turn solenoid. So I can simply replace n as 1 by L. And therefore the inductance for the cylinder would be 
mu naught a by l just by replacing n here as 1 by l now a is nothing but the cross sectional area which is uh, this area which is pi r squared so mu naught pi r squared by l so this is the inductance as far as the cylinder is concerned and that's it all we need to do is substitute resistance and inductance back in our expression for the current so the current that we had gotten e by r into 1 minus e raised to minus rt by l just substitute resistance inductance my emf was 2 by m r square alpha divided by e so i have these three quantities all i have to do is substitute it here so i'm going to leave the substitution up to you i hope you understood the concept on how we calculated the current it all boils down to a fundamental understanding of the emf the emf is not just integral of the electric field it is the integral of the net force acting on the electron and you can separate out the electric field generated by the electron current itself and include that information in the inductance that's it for today see you at the top good night